serial compression. Why using it, when using it, how I use it. Ciao everyone, today we're gonna to talk about serial compression or multi-gain stage processing. What is serial compression? Now, let's assume you have two tasks to achieve within your audio signal. And perhaps in a vocal line, you have specific lines which you want to tame down because their overall pitch level is way louder than the average part of the signal. But at the same time, you also want to take care of the smaller and more uh, mid part of the signal. Well, why having one compressor trying to figure it out how to act and perform on these two different and completely performances within the vocal line or a snare performance or any other instrument. But rather, why are we using serial compression is because we have two compressors that takes care of two or more specific tasks within an audio event. Now, when using it or why not using simply one compressor? Well, why not using more than one compressor? In this specific instance, we're going to talk about how serial compression can help you to achieve an optimal vocal line level. In this example over here, I have a vocal cut by my dear friend and phenomenal performer Chris Classic, one of the best rappers in the game right now. Uh, he performed in a song called Different Breed, which I record and produced along with him. Um, and I'm going to give you a little bit of a sneak peek of the vocal line and then I'm going to show you how I use serial compression to make sure that I could pocket these vocals for the song. No sons with guns coming out in 10. Incredible, formidable, no minimal, never ever been subliminal. Fate doesn't wait for the late and the hate won't obey them an all time grade. So some of you might be wondering, why are you not using simply one compressor? Just slam the hell out of that ratio and threshold and make sure this vocals is fairly well pocketed. Now the problem with using one compressor is that, as you well know, compressors differ in detector circuit, compressors differ in harmonic saturation, but also differ in how fast or slow they are. Hence, for this specific vocals, it's crucial for us to understand the type of color we want to give in order to imprint the right saturation to the overall signal, but also taking care of the dynamic range. Now, rap vocals are possibly one of the hardest things to mix because A, you want to make sure as a mixer you will retain the flow and the impact that the singer has achieved within this performance. And in this case, I have nothing to correct in the performance. The performance is flawless. The flow is great. The dynamic is great. But again, we have to think a bit more broader in the sense that this performance will be united with an instrumental. And you don't want specific lines that our singer is performing to be buried underneath the beat, but also you don't want other lines to stick out too much. So let's go ahead and figure it out a little bit how we can tweak this performance. Now in this example, I'm going to use a classic compressor, which is the 1176 by Universal Audio. In this specific instance, I've chosen uh, Rev A. In this case, it's a bluey phase. The 1176 makes two different compressors. One is a black phase, the other one is the blue phase. They differ primarily in harmonic and they differ pretty much in what they can bring forward. So the way you have to think is that compressors in a way work as well almost as an equalizer. They reshape the timbre of a sound. Noticing that the blue phase of the Universal Audio 1176 imprint to vocals a much brighter sound as it focuses a bit more on the upper mid range of the vocals. Now the 1176 in this case is a compressor but also a limiter. And this is exactly why I'm using this compressor. But first and foremost, let's go ahead to the previous topic of why not using simply one compressor. Let's see what can I do only with one compressor. No sons with guns coming out in 10. Incredible, formidable, no minimal, never ever been subliminal. Fate doesn't wait for the late and the hate won't obey them an all time grade. No sons with guns coming out in 10. Incredible, formidable, no minimal, never ever been subliminal. Fate doesn't wait for the late. No sons with guns coming out in 10.
No sons with guns coming out in 10. So as you see right now, the compressor is actually overworking because it's trying to figure it out exactly what is that you want me to do? Kind of like taming down the picks or taking care of the average portion of the signal. In this specific instance, is acting a bit too harsh. So as I said before, this compressor, the 1176, is a field effect transistor compressor and also allow us to tweak the attack and the release. And this compressor is known for how fast this attack and release envelope work. Another great thing that this compressor is doing and is really good at is limiting. Therefore, I am going to use a ratio of 20 to 1. Now, in this case, with this ratio, the main aim of this compressor is being my limiter. Hence, I want to tame down a little bit of the picks that are present in the song. So, especially in this part over here, this part over here, this part over here, this guy here, this guy here, and this guy here. So I'm actually gonna play from here. Incredible, formidable, no minimal, never ever been subliminal. Fate doesn't wait. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and tweak this compressor a bit. So I'm gonna try to work with a very fast attack, very fast release, trying to get the compressor only to react to the picks. Incredible, formidable, no minimal, never ever been subliminal. Fate doesn't wait for the late and the hate. Incredible, formidable, incredible, formidable, no minimal, never ever been subliminal. Fate doesn't wait for the late and the hate. So as you hear right now, the compressor is acting in taming down a bit the picks. I'm not using specifically the output or the makeup gain because that's going to be the job of my second compressor. This first compressor is only meant to tame down the picks and kind of like pocket them a little bit more closer to the average portion of the signal. I want to try to um, make the attack a little bit slower because I feel that the compressor somehow is eating and chopping up the transient a bit too much. So let's see what happens if I slow down the attack. Incredible, formidable, no minimal, never ever been subliminal. Fate doesn't wait for the late and the hate won't obey them an all time grade. No sons with guns coming out in 10. Incredible, formidable, no minimal, never ever been subliminal. Fate doesn't wait for the late and the hate won't obey. Now, right now, this compressor is doing exactly what I want him to do. In this case, he's going to the picks and kind of like pinch them down. It's like riding an automation, but way faster than I can possibly do with my fingers on my faders here. And so right now, my picks are tamed and kept under control. Now, what I want to do is, now that I've covered this very first part, I want to insert a second stage of compression. A compressor that is much lower, a compressor that is a bit more colorful that can actually help me to bring forward a bit more the average portion of the signal. And yes, you guessed it, is the infamous LA-2A. I'm going to be using the silver, which I happens to love. And in this case, I'm going to be using this compressor, which is a much slower compressor. Respecting the field, of the field effect transistor compressor, this is a tube compressor. That means that it reacts uh, to the incoming level and the attack and release time are program dependent. Depending on how much gain reduction I would get, the attack and release will vary. So what I want to do is aim for a minus 3 dB of gain reduction. No sons with guns coming out in 10. Incredible, formidable, no minimal, never ever been subliminal. Fate doesn't wait for the late and the hate won't obey them an all time great. No sons with guns coming out in 10. Incredible. All right, I'm going to bypass here and back. I'm going to bypass to hear what this compressor is actually adding to the signal. No sons with guns coming out in 10. No sons with guns coming out in 10. Incredible, formidable, no minimal, never ever been subliminal. Fate doesn't wait for the late and the hate won't obey them an all time grade. All right, I think right now we have achieved the right pocket for the vocals, where we keep a lot of the dynamic that our rapper or vocalist wanted to imprint to the song, 
but yet we make sure that all these differences in dynamic are well kept under control. I'm going to let you hear these two compressors on and off. So let me pull them out so that you can see it. And this is without. No sons with guns coming out in 10. Incredible, formidable, no minimal, never ever been subliminal. Fate doesn't wait for the late and the hate won't debate. I'm an all time great. Compressors on. No sons with guns coming out in 10. Incredible, formidable, no minimal, never ever been subliminal. Fate doesn't wait for the late and the hate won't debate. I'm an all time great. So as you could hear right now, the vocals is very, very much pocketed. And right now we have these compressors working in tandem and one is taking care of different aspect of it. But what would happen if I would revert the orders of these compressors? I'm going to do the opposite in the insert FJ. So I'm going to put the LA to A first and the 1176 after. Shift 2 to bypass the insert A3. I'm going to go ahead and open up the LA to A only on my vocals. No sons with guns coming out in 10. Incredible, formidable, no minimal, never ever been subliminal. Fate doesn't wait for the late and the hate won't debate. I'm a Use my C. Using my 1176. No sons with guns coming out in 10. Incredible, formidable, no minimal, never ever been subliminal. So I'm going to let you hear the first A to E serial compressor, serial compression, and then the F to J. So first, our first iteration. No sons with guns coming out in 10. Incredible, formidable, no minimal. Second iteration. No sons with guns coming out in 10. Incredible, formidable, no minimal, never ever been subliminal. Again, first. No sons with guns coming out in 10. Second. No sons with guns coming out in 10. Putting the teletronics before as our first insert feeding the 1176 squashes the sound a bit too much due to the fact that the LA-2A is actually a much slower compressor. Compressor. Right now he is kind of like freaking out a bit too much and squashing the sound a bit because again we have this high peak values that trigger the detector circuits of this compressor making it react and squashing the dynamic a bit too much. And then if we add a compressor like uh, an 1176 right after, it actually squashes the sound even more. Although, you know, we could have tried smaller ratio. Uh, in this specific instance, this order doesn't really uh, makes a lot of sense. Why did I do that? In a nutshell, I wanted to understand if reverting the order of this compressor would make a better job or not. And again, the, the beauty of mixing is experimenting. So I wanted just to give you this two different approach just for you to really hear what the effect is. But again, this effect is very personal. So what I say might be different from the way you hear things. So experiment. A different thing also I want to do is to see if I can add a third order compression to our vocals. And in this case, I want to change completely the type of coloration. As a matter of fact, I'm going to be using another 1176. But in this case, I want it to be the black face, the legacy version. There we go. And now this 1176 is going to be set so that, again, we have a 20 to 1 ratio, an extremely fast release time, an extremely kind of medium to fast attack. And again, this compressor is only going to be used for me to even up even further the type of dynamics we have within this vocal. No sons with guns coming out in 10. Incredible, formidable, no minimal, never ever been subliminal. Fate doesn't wait for the late and the hate won't debate. I'm an all-time great.
No sons with guns coming out in 10. Incredible, formidable, no minimal, never ever been subliminal. Fate doesn't wait for the late and the hate won't debate. I'm an all time great. See, right now, what I'm doing is using very similar parameters, but I'm taking care on the type of color that this 1176 imprint to the sounds, and I'm using a slightly slower release time so that the actual end of the envelope of the words can be sustained just a little bit more. I'm gonna let you hear with and without this compressor. No sons with guns coming out in 10. Incredible, formidable, no minimal. With. No sons with guns coming out in 10. Incredible, formidable, no minimal. Never ever been subliminal. And now the vocals is really pocketed. Again, there is no uh, right or wrong. You have to find the right balance between the type of vision that you have for something that you're about to mix and all the tools that are just simply a color palette for you to actually paint on this beautiful Canva nose as music, known as music. So I'm gonna let you hear everything without our sealer compression and then with. No sons with guns coming out in 10. Incredible, formidable, no minimal, never ever been so. Incredible, formidable, never, no, 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 no. I want to tame this down a little bit. With. No sons with guns coming out in 10. Incredible, formidable, no minimal, never ever been subliminal. Fate doesn't wait for the late and the hate won't debate. I'm an all time great. This is what I call a really good pocketed vocals. Consider we haven't yet added any EQ, any saturation, nothing. But right now the vocals are sitting in a point where we can actually understand every single iteration of what the singer is trying to say. And we are respecting, even most importantly, his dynamic. So now you might wonder, all right, this is cool. You have very cool plugins. I don't have these plugins. How can I do this? And can I achieve this with stock plugins? Yes, you can. Let me show you. I'm going to go ahead and just make this plugin inactive and bypass the other two. So let's go ahead and just choose our classic Dynamic 3 compressor that comes stock with Pro Tools. And you can do this with any single other stock plugin that comes with Logic, Ableton, Cubase, you name it. So I'm going to go ahead and first and foremost, we have to more or less find the exact same settings that the 1176 and the 2LA have it. So I'm going to go ahead and first and foremost, for the 1176 portion, I'm going to go with an extremely fast attack. The release time is generally between 40 and 60 milliseconds. Let's going to go, let's go on 40 milliseconds. As for the ratio, I'm going to go really hard because the first plugin, if you remember, we have chosen a 20 to 1 ratio, which in this case, we're going to put this compressor to work a bit more as a limiter, so 100 to 1 in this specific uh, linear phase compressor. Lastly, I'm going to try to find the right sweet spot for my threshold. No sons with guns coming out in 10. Incredible, formidable, no minimal, never ever been subliminal. Fate doesn't wait for the late and the hate won't... And of course, I will compensate with a little bit of makeup gain. So let's say more or less 2.5 dB. All right, so these settings are pretty much an emulation of how an 1176 works. Extremely fast attack, medium fast release time, a ratio as high as you can get. And right now what I'm trying to do is, again, using this compressor as a pick limiter compressor. So this is without. No sons with guns coming out in 10. Incredible, formidable, no minimal, never ever been subliminal. With. No sons with guns coming out in 10. Incredible, formidable, no minimal, never ever been subliminal. So as you can see right now, this compressor is really acting on the picks, but we're kind of like losing, as we had before saw and heard, the kind of like average portion of the signal. What I'm going to do is duplicate this compressor, but this time, of course, I have to change the settings because 1176 and the LA-2A works in a very different manner. So for the attack time on the Teletronics LA-2A, generally we are close to 10 milliseconds. And for the release time, we are approximately on 64, 63 milliseconds. 
I'm going to slow down the ratio, let's say 4 to 1. And again here, I will give my 2 dB of make again and work a little bit with the threshold. So let's put the threshold up. And again, the job of this second compressor in series will be to enhance the average portion of the signal. I'm going to put up a little bit my knee with 2 dB. No and, sons then, with guns. and then start compressing. No sons with guns coming out in 10. Incredible, formidable, no minimal, never ever been subliminal. Fate doesn't wait for the late and the hate won't debate. I'm an all time great. All right, so the moment of truth. I'm gonna bypass the stock compressors in here before and after. No sons with guns coming out in 10. Incredible, formidable, no minimal, never ever been subliminal. No sons with guns coming out in 10. Incredible, formidable, no minimal, never ever been subliminal. Fate doesn't wait for the late and the hate won't debate. I'm an all time great. So, as you were able to hear in this specific instance, these compressors are doing the exact same thing that our 1176 and 2LA and LA2A were doing. Now, the difference is that, of course, is that the first two compressors we use are actually an emulation of the analog compressor. So they will add a little bit or actually a lot of the harmonic texture that this compressor really have in real life. These stock plugins are primarily linear compressors, so their job is only to take care of the dynamic range. But in terms of sound, if you put them at unity, they won't add anything to the signal. Now, what I want to do is to let you hear a comparison between the analog serial stock compression and the digital serial stock compression. And I'm gonna just leave this up to you. So comment down below what you think was the best combination of compressors and let me know what you think. Let's start with the analog. So I'm just going to pull up two of my compressors just for you to see it. So we're going to go with analog first, digital after. No sons with guns coming out in 10. Incredible, formidable, no minimal, never ever been subliminal. Fate doesn't wait for the late and the hate won't debate. I'm an all time great. No sons with guns coming out in 10. Incredible, formidable, no minimal, never ever been subliminal. Fate doesn't wait for the late and the hate won't debate. I'm an all time great. I think they are very similar. The only thing again that changes is the timbre that the analog emulations add due to its harmonic distortions. I will just do one final pass and engage them throughout the performance starting with the analog. No sons with guns coming out in 10. Incredible, formidable, no minimal, never ever been subliminal. Fate doesn't wait for the late and the hate won't play I'm an all time great. You have no excuses. Now you see that even stock plugins can actually achieve a great results and a great deal of sound. So it's up to you to experiment. But what I want you to understand is how important it is to really think on what is that you want to achieve. What are the tasks that needs to be addressed within an audio signal and what type of compressors or game processor I could use to achieve that. I'm going to move on to a different example right now. Let's try to take a bass line, for example, and apply the exact same techniques. So for my bass right now, I'm going to be using the exact same approach, just changing a little bit the orders or the style of compressor. I'm going to go ahead and again choose an 1176. But this time, I will actually start with a black face on my compressor. Now, why am I using a black face? As I said before, in this case, the black key imprints a bit more color and texture to the lower mid part of the signal. And since we're dealing with a bass guitar, this is exactly what I want to do. But before I even start tweaking the bass, I'm gonna let you hear a little bit of this performance. So 
the bass player was very consistent, but yet there are a few notes that need to be taken care of. So I'm going to go ahead again and try to put a ratio of 20 to 1. I'm going to start with very fast attack and release time. And again, my main and primary job here is to figure it out how to tame down a bit of these peaks. So here, here, and especially here. So again, as you can see right now, the compressor is spiking out and kind of like taming down only the loudest portion of the signal, which are primarily these peaks over here, a little bit of this peak, and this peak over here when it just goes down on the fret. I'm going to let you hear before and after. After. As you can see right now, the compressor is actually squashing it down these peaks. But now, how can it bring forward the average part of the signal? You already know. Let's add a serial compressor here. And let's do an LA to A. Let's see if I find it. Let's go with the silver again. And what I want to do is to enhance a bit more the rest of the notes of this bass. I think we have found a good balance for our bass. I'm going to go ahead and let you hear the bass first without the serial compression and then with. With. So as you have noticed right now, serial compression is a great, great way for us to really figure a balance between the picks and the average portion of the signal. And the most important thing is that we retain a lot of the dynamics. Because again, the name of the game here is not squashing the living life out of a signal, but rather help the performance to flourish within the integrity of the whole song. I hope this was helpful. If you like this video, please like and subscribe for more videos like this. And until the next tutorial, ciao.